my connection is that my mother's family lived there, the Cooks. Um, I spent all my holidays up there and at that time there was my great aunt Lizzie and my great uncle Tom living in the little cottage. My connection to Colwyn are quite strong because my family have been around for a, quite a long time. The Richards, I think, moved into Silcombe Farm in about 1840 and later on they married into the Red family of Broom Street who had been around in the parish for even longer. Well my connection was the fact that my wife Jean and I lived there from 1982 as caretakers for the Corbon Trust which was formed by Joan Cooper uh, who we met in 1980 and whose work was so important that we felt on her death in 1982 that it needed someone to continue it. In those days, the wool was worth more money than it is today. Uh, we also sold a bit of cream. We hand milked the cows, uh, bucket fed the calves. It always seemed to me that comparing it to now that it seemed much more leisurely back then. Sure, people worked very hard, and I think it was as hard for the farmer's wife. It's still hard now, but um, at least they got washing machines, they got deep freezes, fridges, dishwashers, which years ago was all done by hand. But there was usually more more hands around in those days. Very interesting. Uh, never a dull moment living in Colborne. Sometimes getting out of Colborne was very difficult. If a tree had come down across the track, I would leave Jean looking after the people that would be coming uh, into the valley to have help or refreshments and I would go out gardening for a living. <coughs> my friend who was my sort of close partner used to complain sometimes that I was late for work until he had the uh, opportunity to stay in Corbone whilst Jean and I were away for a while and he had to go to work himself from Corbone. He never complained again after that. Lizzie used to do teas, so she would be baking um, and then also keeping house for when Tom came back. They had no children of their own, but they brought my mother and her two cousins up. Lizzie was employed in the big house. Uh, she would also help out around the farms especially with bed and breakfast, um, in haymaking, um, and um, also if there was illness in the, on the farm, she would help out. But she also looked after the church, she would clean it, look after the vestments and the money that was left by visitors walking up to Colburn. So it was a, a hard life. Also there was um, the CHA, which was the Christian Holiday Association. They would come once a year, they would walk between Porlock and Linmouth and Linton and would stop at Aunt Liz's for teas. There could be upwards of 50 people and they would be all over the house. So that was an interesting time. Well, I think the biggest change that, that I can remember in Coburn would have been um, the last of the Cooks dying at Coburn, which was Lizzie Cook, because Lizzie and Tom Cook, their husband, had, they'd lived there, they were married in 1914, but their grandmother had lived there before that. So the Cooks had been there best part of a hundred years, and Lizzie was, nobody visited Coburn without meeting Lizzie, because she always, she did teas there and knew everything that went on in Coburn. And she knew Coburn, you know, what had gone on there for 50 or 60 years before. And it was a great loss to anybody who visited Coburn not to meet up with Lizzie. Walking up to Coburn on the church path, you come around a little corner. I've got my three little boys with me, my husband, and there was no smoke coming out of the cottage. And that's when I learnt that Aunt Liz had collapsed and had been taken to hospital. And it, it really affected me that it doesn't matter what building there is, it's the people 
who are in that building that make it. The Linmouth and Linton flood disaster. Um, we were actually due to go to Linmouth uh, that very day. Not sure how we would have got there, mind. But the, the rain and the heavens just opened and the rain was coming down what we called the road, but was really just a track. Uh, it was a wash and the stones were moving, everything. So there was no way we were going to even go outside the front door and open up the church because nobody came. The most significant to us was the fact that a walker going through from Minehead to Lynmouth uh, was missing. The National Park Ranger came in looking very worried had we seen this lady as um, her daughter said that she hadn't arrived at Lynmouth and they unfortunately found that she had gone over one of the landslips and fallen to her death on the rocks below and that was very distressing for all of us. The thing is, I was brought up a Methodist, but there was a service in the church um, every week. On one week it would be in the morning, and the next week it would be in the afternoon. Um, so I would go to church with Aunt Liz and Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom would never let me pull the bell, but Aunt Liz did. So if he was away, I could get to ring the bell. Um, but the point was, being a Methodist, I couldn't follow the services very well, but I did enjoy the singing. Aunt Liz cleaned the church um, and looked after the vestments and the money that was left by visitors. And every night we would go, I would go there when I was up there on holiday, take the money, lock the gate and the door and come back into Aunt Liz's and we would count the money out um, and she would put it away ready for wherever it had to go. The other thing was Aunt Liz's dog Sandy used to go to church with her and he would sit at the back at her, by her feet. Carol service was the special one of the year. The number of people that used to come meant that we had to put stalls all down the central aisle for people to sit on because uh, we far exceeded the number the church could hold, being the smallest used parish church in the country. Um, and the atmosphere, the fact that uh, the church was lit by candles and, and uh, little Caligas lights um, made it all very special indeed and all the folks that used to come thoroughly enjoyed it. Physically I don't think it's changed at all. What has changed is the sense of community, um, lack of worshippers in the church. Um, in my day, the church could be full, um, and if it was overflowing, then the organ would be dragged out into the churchyard and everybody would sit and stand wherever they could get. I used to stand in what I called the market cross. It was an open um, stone, and I would stand in there. Well, I think um, little has changed at Colburn, and as long as um, Colburn stays as it is, I think many people would continue to visit it and enjoy the tranquility and, and enchantment of the place. Well, I think Colburn is a place that will never really change. Its atmosphere is still as uh, poignant as it ever has been, and it attracts people seemingly from all over the world for that something special that they get from it. A, a church being in such a, an out of the way place, it cannot help but attract people and especially in this day and age where more and more people are walking and finding such perfect little paradises which Colbone is. <laughs>